All right, in this video, we're gonna resume. This is part two to multiple app launchers. And in part one, we discussed how to make all of these icons here pop up. Uh, we talked about the delays, and then we talked about how we can, you know, cycle between these various icons, as you can see here. Uh, all of this was discussed in part one. And what we wanna talk about now is when we click on something, say for example, we click on the social icon that we created, some things pop up, or if we click up on this Google icon down here, some more icons pop up that we can launch a particular app. That's the part two that we're gonna discuss here. So let's go into KOWP and have a look. So inside of KOWP, I'm going to go ahead and launch these icons again by tapping the button. Again, that was discussed in part one. And let's create uh, some icons for this Google piece down here. So I'm just gonna go to my Google overlap group. I'm gonna copy and paste that but we're gonna make some changes to this. So I've copied and pasted that and I'm gonna name this Google Icons. And what we're gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna to go to that Google Icons. We're going to take away the touch that we had applied. Remember, we did have a touch applied to the big G icon here. I'm gonna take that away. And I'm also gonna go back to items and I'm going to delete the icon overlap group that we had there. But I'm gonna leave my blank shape. This blank shape that we made back in part one was a little bit bigger than the actual shape that we have here. So when we start uh, positioning these icons that we put up on this new piece, we can you know, position them in the top left, top right, bottom, whatever we wanna do. And that's what we're gonna focus on right now. But before we do that, let's go to animation for this piece. And we want to change this. I'm gonna use a complex animation here. What we want to happen here is when I click on this G, I want these icons to pop out and I also want them to spin. So this is a good candidate for a complex animation. So for this formula underneath this animation, I'm gonna take away everything, um, this closed stuff. So basically when we tap the big G, the big Google icon, we want these uh, other icons to pop out at us and spin or whatever. So if GV Go is equal to Google, if we tap that big G circle icon, then we want to bring these Google icons forward. Otherwise we wanna send them back. So that's our code, our formula there. And let's change the action to a complex animation. In our animator, Let's come down and let's go ahead and set uh, at 0% of our animation. I want the scale X, Y to be zero. So at the start of the animation, I want it to be teeny tiny, invisible. Um, and then I want it to scale out to its original size. So I'm gonna add another one. And at 100%, I want the scale X, Y to be one. This is going to make it zoom up or pop up on the screen. Um, if we set scale X, Y to one, it's gonna be its original size. So from zero to 100%, it's gonna scale from zero to one, which is small to its original size. And then also we mentioned that we want to do a rotation on this. Of course, you can do whatever you'd like here. So I'm just gonna to go to rotate and let's do two full rotations, which corresponds to 720 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and check that. And you're not gonna see that right now. Um, if I go and cycle back and forth between these things, you're not gonna see anything happen here, except maybe you see that square right there, that red square. Well, this is where we're gonna put our icons because this is this new overlap group that we've just created, Google Icons. Remember, we removed the touch from it, we've changed our animation, and now we've also deleted that G from this Google Icons because we're going to put some smaller ones inside of this. So I'm going to go inside of my Google Icons overlap group, keeping that blank shape that is bigger, I'm going to add a font icon. And I'm gonna add a few of these actually. So here's one underneath Font Awesome, the Google Plus. And right now it's in the center. If I position this, let's say we position it at the top, Using that blank shape that we had back here, this blank shape was a circle that was bigger than all these other black circles. So we're positioning this at the top and this gives us some room to put additional icons around here. But I can go ahead and show you the animation now that we see a piece in here. So let's kind of refresh on everything we've done so far. We've taken away the touch. Uh, the animation for this Google icons group is the following. If GVGo is equal to Google, we wanna bring this animation forward. And if it's not equal to Google, we wanna send it back. Well, right now, 
our GV Go is equal to Google. Now, if I start cycling around through these, notice the, the G plus icon went away because that's what's sending that animation back because GV Go is no longer equal to Google. So we're sending that animation back and basically it's reversing this complex animation that we created. All right, so let's go back and set it equal to Google again. I'm gonna to touch the big G, and now we're gonna see the scale and the two full rotations. Hopefully you did see that there, but I can do it again real quick for you, going back and forth between those. And now, you know, you can add more icons in here, so I'm just gonna add two more icons real quick. All right, so what I've done there is I've added a Google Wallet icon just for Google. You know, this is my Google app launcher, if you will, and then an Android icon. And I've positioned the Google Wallet icon in the bottom left of this overlap group. That's putting it at the bottom left of this bigger blank shape that we created back in part one. And then I did a bottom right on this Android that you see right here. Okay, so now we can apply some launches. What do we want these things to do when we touch like the G plus? So I'm gonna go to that G plus font icon. I'm gonna go to touch. And this is where we can launch our activities, or not activities here, but our apps. So I'm going to launch an app. So I picked uh, launch app, Google Plus was the app that I chose. And now uh, let's close all this out. Let's save it. And let's go back to the home screen. So everything is closed. If we open this up, now I can still cycle between these, but again, we have not created our icons for these back pieces. But if I come to this one, now our GV goes equal to Google. You did see these pieces animate out. And if I start tapping on other pieces, notice it does go away. Now what we can also do here is we can put an X inside of this to close just this one down. So let's go do that real quick. So back inside of the Google icons where we just have these uh, three font icons and I'm gonna open that up real quick so we can see it. Let's put an X right smack in the middle of it. You can use a text item here or you can use a font icon or you can use whatever you want. Just some symbol to show that you're going to close this group. So there's my X uh, font icon probably would look better. The position is in the center but maybe apply a little bit of top padding to center it up a little bit more, something like that maybe. And if we touch this X, this is important. So if we touch this X, we're gonna to toggle that global switch go again, but there's no code we need here. I mentioned this back in part one to give you a head start on this uh, tutorial here, but basically we wanna set it equal to something that we haven't used yet. You know, we've used cash, uh, pick, uh, contacts or social here. We use game or games right here. We've used Google. Um, and then we also have that open and close. Well, a word we haven't used yet is back. And back kind of makes sense because, you know, if we're inside of this group here and we want to close just this group out without having to touch something else, I'm just gonna say, hey, I wanna go back. So I'm gonna press that X there. And now we go back and notice we did close the Google group and now our text global is equal to back. And now what you wanna do with this, so now it's equal to Google. I could actually tap on this G plus here and it would launch the app. As you can see there, that's what the advanced editor will show. But if I tap this X here, it's going to set it to back, which is going to essentially close that group and take us back to our default setup. But what's cool about this as well, at any given point in time, you know, we can tap this thing right here with the way we set it up in part one and it's gonna close everything out. And if we open it back up, like you see here, it's going to give us that little default setup where we have all our little multiple app launcher icons uh, showing right in front of us. Now what you'd have to do from here is apply similar things to all of these other pieces. There, there's multiple ways you could do that. You could take this Google icons group. Since you have like everything kind of set up with the Google icons, we could copy and paste this. And I'm gonna rename this one pick icons. I'll show you one more of these. And you basically you're doing the same thing for all of these except you gotta change the codes and, and stuff like that. So pick icons is what I'm gonna name this one. I'm gonna go ahead and take this overlap group. I'm gonna position it in the top right because that's where my pick icon launcher piece is up there. If I go to animation and I'm just going to set uh, if GV go is equal to, and I think we had it set to pick back in part one. So I'm gonna set that to pick and of course, what you would do here, since we had this, let's see if it works. 
So yes, as you can see, we now have uh, this new group up here. We copied and pasted the Google icons. That's why you see the Google icons. But this one right here, pick icons is this one. So obviously you wanna come in here and change these font icons to launch your picture apps or whatever you wanted to launch. And then also make sure you change the touches to launch those particular apps. But at least, you know, we quickly, we could just move that up there. And that's probably the best bet to duplicate these pieces because you're still keeping that X that's going to send you back. And now if we go to Google, where the text global is equal to Google, if I go to pick, this would be the new one up here. But again, make sure you change your icons for this one. And then we can still cycle through all these other ones once you copy and paste uh, this little icon group here. We can press X to go back and we can still do all of our other stuff, opening and closing. All of this is done with one text global. So again, just take those pieces, copy and paste them. Uh, make sure you position them in the top left, the center and the bottom right, depending on which one you're creating. And if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.